Since you all like my cart rip videos and I'm still no closer to solving the mystery of who made them, how old they are and what they were for, I decided to go on another exploration, this time to the most famous set in Malta known as Clapham Junction. It was a fun day, I took lots of footage, made some measurements with my big stick and got bitten by an insect I could not identify. Although Clapham Junction is marked on Google Maps and is a tourist attraction, if you go on a weekday at this time of year, it's practically empty. So luckily I didn't have to do too many maneuvers to avoid people being in my footage. In this video, I also run through the geology of Malta since I get questions on that a lot in my live chats and comments and haven't touched on it much before in my previous episodes on the cart ruts. I also go into some detail on the various solutions that have been proposed for these mysterious tracks. Stay right to the end to hear those. First things first, if you are not familiar with the mysterious cart ruts, which are found in many locations, but with an enormous, unexplainable intensity on the small islands of Malta, then take a look at my other videos on the subject to give you a bit of an introduction. Before we get into my little expedition, let's start with the geology of Malta. The Maltese islands are made up of sedimentary rocks that were formed between 25 and 5 million years ago as marine deposits under shallowish water. In Malta, you can find lots of marine fossils embedded in the rocks, but there are obviously no dinosaur fossils because the Maltese islands simply haven't been above water long enough. Having formed between the Oligocene and Miocene epochs, they eventually came to the surface due to uplifting caused by the Pantelleria rift system. This system developed during the late Miocene and it's this tectonic activity that also caused the island of Lampedusa to rise up above sea level. As a result of tectonics, Malta is tilted towards the northeast, which is why its gentle slopes and bays are on the east and southeast and its high cliffs are on the west and southwest coasts. It has many fault lines, much of which run along this southwest to northeast orientation. The famous fortifications known as the Victoria Lines were built in the 19th century on the ridge that was a long time ago caused by the Great Fault. There are five geological strata in the Maltese Islands comprising from oldest to youngest Lower Coralline Limestone, Globigerina Limestone, Blue Clay, Green Sand and Upper Coralline Limestone. They are layered with the oldest at the bottom. However, tectonic activity has caused some of the lower levels to be exposed in various parts of the islands. The blue clay is the only geological formation that isn't permeable, so water accumulates on it forming perched aquifers. The cart ruts are all over the islands. I've marked some of them here. They are always found in exposed limestone. Sometimes during construction work, cart ruts are found that have been covered by the accumulation of soil, probably over thousands of years. And the great thing about those is that they are obviously not as eroded as others. In my opinion, it's the newly discovered ones that give us the best idea of how they looked originally. Clapham Junction is a nickname given to a set of cart ruts located near Busquet Gardens in the west of Malta. The Maltese name is Misra Ar Il Kabir. Sorry for my pronunciation. As you can see from the satellite image, there are lots of them at this location running in different directions as well as parallel and sometimes overlapping one another. The cart ruts are publicly accessible and well signposted. There's also the remains of an old troglodytic settlement in the area. It's basically a huge cave with artificial partitions which is to the west of the cart ruts. If you visit the area, be careful of rock falls and craggy ground and wear good walking shoes. Apologies that I don't have a gimbal, I will buy one at some point to stop the shaky footage, or at least reduce it. Here you can see clearly the exposed limestone landscape where the cart ruts are found. On your first visit you might find it hard to spot them at first. Here is one coming up on the right, although it's not so clear due to it being covered in vegetation. As you can see, this is a pretty long cart rut. I'm going to go all the way 
up it but the coralline parts and the overgrown sections are very craggy so it is going to be a bit of a bumpy video and I can't really avoid that let's have a look right to the edge of it So this is one of the classic splits that you see in many of the cart ruts where they cross over each other or where it looks sometimes as if one cart rut was worn over time and then another cart rut was worn kind of parallel to it but crossing over it slightly and is a bit shallower maybe the first one got too deep to use and then they decided to use the second one but then and that's the kind of argument for them being worn into the bedrock rather than cut and carved, but I don't know. Look how deep this one is. I mean, wow. I'm going to measure this one. I get my stick out. This one measured two meters and 15 centimeters in width from the outer edge of one parallel groove to the outer edge of the other one. That's 84 inches. The gauge of the central reservation is 90 centimeters. So that's 35 inches. The height of the groove is 30 centimeters. So about 12 inches. Here's another section that looks like railway switches. Lower down the slope, the same cart rut is two meters in width from one outer edge to the other, so about six inches less than further up. But the central reservation is one meter in width, so about four inches more than the upper section. The depth is 40 centimeters, so four inches more than the upper measurement. So as you can see, the widths and depths do vary along one cart rut and between cart ruts. In the distance, you can see a modern day quarry to the south of the cart ruts. It's possible that it was also the site of an ancient quarry and that the cart ruts were somehow related to such activities, but no one has been able to determine exactly how. See where it's got broken up at some point in its history and then it actually continues a little bit further up. This is the cave known as Ar Il Kabir in Maltese, literally big cave. It was home to a small troglodytic settlement several hundred years ago.
This is a Punic shaft tomb that interrupts the cart ruts. It's been seen as evidence that the cart ruts are pre-Punic, so Bronze Age. However, the local professor Anthony Bonanno has argued that this doesn't necessarily make the cart ruts pre-Punic. They may just date to an older time within the Punic period than when the shaft tomb was carved. So there you have a little overview of the most famous cart rut site in Malta. It's packed full of cart ruts, mostly running north to south, but with some running east to west. They vary in terms of width and depth, but one thing that they all have in common is that they are parallel grooves carved or worn into the bedrock, or possibly partially carved as well as worn into the bedrock. Experts have put forward various solutions in the past. One is that the Clapham Junction site might have been created for the irrigation of the surrounding fields. The paper which suggests this cannot really apply the same idea to other cart ruts though. It only works for Clapham Junction because of the way that the majority of the ruts are parallel to one another and run down a gentle slope. Also, like I said at the beginning of the video, limestone is permeable to water, so I do wonder how useful they would have been as an irrigation system. That said, there are examples of Neolithic silos that were probably water systems, and these were not lined with any kind of ancient plaster. These are known as the Mizar tanks, which are near the Nidra temples. In his book, Cart Ruts and Their Impact on the Maltese Landscape, the late archaeologist David H. Trump discussed the various prevailing ideas about the cart ruts, such as the type of vehicle that may have worn them, how soil cover may have played a role, and what sort of load they may have carried. I'll do my best to summarize some of the key points. The idea that they were worn by a cart or a sledge is problematic because of the varying gauges, sharp turns and areas where the rut suddenly drops in depth, creating a stepped appearance. Another option is that of a slide car with parallel poles. However, if this slide car was being pulled by an animal, then why don't the central reservations have hoof marks? Trump suggests that there may have been a soil cover originally, which explains the lack of hoof marks and also explains why in some places the cart ruts run over older dissolution hollows that would have been difficult for a vehicle to navigate. But, as Trump points out, such a soil cover would have struggled to cling onto the stepped areas unless it was really thick. And if it was really thick, the underlying rock wouldn't have been worn anyway. In terms of loads, Trump suggests that the vehicles, whatever they were, may have been for carrying agricultural produce or soil for the terracing of fields. He doesn't think they are as ancient as the Neolithic or that they were for carrying stone blocks to build the temples. None of the ruts run close to the temples and the movement of stones over large distances wouldn't have been required anyway because there is just so much rock all over the islands, including in close proximity to the temple sites. If they were for moving agricultural produce, and this was during the Bronze Age, then in my view we are looking at a very impressive transportation network which presumably supported a large population. But the Bronze Age settlements that have been found so far don't seem that big, so I find it quite puzzling. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you next time.